Hey stampers, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, I was just looking for something really quick to show you uh, because we are into October, which is really exciting. Um, and around here at least, it's beginning to look a little like Christmas. Now I know if you are the person at, you know, who goes into the Target or whatever, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to see Christmas till after Halloween. That's fine, but you know when you're crafting that starting early on your Christmas cards is always a good idea. So I wanted to get ahead of the game and show you one of my favorite stamp sets from the catalog, holiday catalog here. Um, and it is absolutely darling, and it has the best accents, I think, in the catalog as far as like flexibility and little touches and um, a little goes a long way. So I'm going to uh, show those perks and those little treats to you this morning. Um, oh good, Tanya says Christmas early crafting is the best. Yeah, gotta get started, right? And it's just kind of fun and um, gives you a chance to look forward to seasons that are coming. So, and of course people like Cindy are already done with their Christmas cards, but you know, next year, right? Um, so impressed by that. Anyway, uh, so this, the stamps that we're gonna use, um, if you haven't guessed it already, uh, is very sweet. It is the Sweet Stockings. Um, sweet collection. So we're going to use these um, little guys this morning uh, to make a Christmas card, but it's kind of a special Christmas card layout because I don't know about you, but you know, you decorate the front of your card and then you open it up and you're like, oh, well, you know, um, you can decorate the front and then open it and you could decorate the, the inside separately, which is also good. Um, but what about like decorating the front and having it show up inside the card too. So that is the magic of an extended Z fold card where you get the front of your card and on the inside too. So I'm gonna show you that card layout. Um, we're gonna use it this morning and I think you guys are going to be super pleased with the sweetness of our stocking cards. So we're gonna do a little felt. I have some important die cutting tips for you on the felt. Um, we're gonna do a little stamp and blends and we're gonna use the designer series paper. So the paper from this suite uh, features dogs and cats. And if you are a um, small pet person, uh, like we kind of are in our family too, then there's this, ooh, there it is, this little kind of all purpose small mammal stamp. So um, that's available to you too, but I'm gonna flip the camera down so I can kind of show you this paper. I'm glad to see you guys this morning. Um, okay, someone has been using my camera stand, which is good. I'm glad that we have the tools available, but uh, it is also making it a little tricky to get organized this morning and have it not sink. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. A little bit closer. Are we good? Plus or minus, where's my registration papers? Um, you don't see it so much on things anymore, but you used to see registration marks on stuff all the time. Now I think that we're digital, we see less registration marks, but this grid paper is kind of like my registration marks. So, all right, we, um, like I said, are gonna look at this paper here briefly. Um, it is uh, solid color, like dark patterns kind of on the back. So sort of the that neutrally pattern, I always call it. Um, with lots of choices there. And then the fronts are the decorated ones. So we have cats and dogs, um, these little mini stockings. Like, have you ever seen a golden retriever smile more? Um, this cat who looks a lot like cats that I see on Facebook when people um, dress their cats. Sort of <laughs> sketchy there with the uh, appreciation. Some stockings, um, more cats and dogs. A corgi wearing a sweater. A goldfish, like there, this paper is pretty all-purpose and the cute ornaments. So lots of good possibilities for it. And I'm gonna show you one this morning that lets us um, sort of make the most of a bunch of paper. Oh, and then this one, which I've already, already sort of decimated my supply of. All right, so extended Z-fold. Huh. Good morning, everybody. Margie, Jan, Trish, Margaret, Sue, Petra, Kelly, Cindy, Tanya, Sandy, Taryn, Deborah. Okay, I'm sorry if I missed you guys. Um, so the card size that we're going to use um, is, uh, let's see, one, two, fix this. The card size that we're gonna use is um, four and a quarter inches by five and a half. Uh, four and a quarter inches by 11, sorry. We're gonna score it at 
there we go. Okay, there's my note for you. Um, so DSP is going to be cut to two pieces for our extended Z fold. We have the first piece, which is four and a quarter by four inches. It's gonna kind of go on the front of our card. And then we have this four and a quarter by two inches that's gonna go on the inside of our card. Our cardstock is going to be cut to, like it says on this, oh, you're kind of cut off there. Let's move it up here. Um, your cardstock here is gonna be cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches. And then you're going to score here at five and a half inches, which is kind of the halfway point for our card. And then at um, nine and three quarters, which gives you a panel in the front that's an inch and a quarter wide. So, all right, so these, um, cutting directions and stuff are, you know, I just gave them to you, but they're also available um, in PDF for this month. The October um, monthly tutorials, Love and Stamps monthly tutorials will feature um, this suite. So if you are a person who loves um, pets and cats and dogs, or you are um, sending cards to pet lovers, then this is definitely a suite to have. Um, if you are like, well, that's not really my jam, um, you might be sending cards to those people, or there are plenty of things in this set that make it um, all purpose. So stockings, presents, a Santa hat, which I've used already for other things this year. Um, it's actually the first stamp that I use. And these little elements and these greetings, it's a really good all purpose Christmas set. It's not just for pets. All right, so our extended Z fold. How to assemble. This is really important because when I made my sample this morning, I glued it all shut and just like got to the end. I'm like, wait, what did I do? So you are going to go ahead and fold your cardstock the way I showed you. Um, the easy part here is to add this um, designer series paper. It's the two inch panel um, that's gonna go on the inside here. And so I'm gonna open this card up and layer this in here and it should fit right there like that. Okay, so that's the easy one. Now, the tricky one is this front panel. So you'll notice that you cut it to four and a quarter inches tall, okay? If it looks like this, with this green at the bottom and top, you don't have it facing the right direction. But here, it's cut to four and a quarter inches tall, four and a quarter inches tall, and it's gonna fit underneath the flap and it's going to attach here so that it moves freely. So here's how we're gonna do that. You're gonna open this up, I've got it held in place, and I'm gonna put one strip of strong adhesive, tear tape or seal plus, and I'm gonna put one strip of adhesive here towards the edge of my cardstock flap, and then I'm gonna put another strip of adhesive here on the edge of my DSP. So you can kind of see how those are gonna attach at sort of both edges, all right? Now, I did not put two strips of adhesive on the green layer because if you do that, you run the risk of sealing your card shut and then you'd be sad like I was earlier. <laughs> all right, and then I'm just gonna hold this all in place, fold it over and squish it down and check out, da -da -da! this is the extended Z fold, okay? So this is our card base. So it lets us see the front of our card when our card is open, okay? Now, I have a whole bunch more tips for you um, using the felt. Uh, and how we're gonna decorate this card um, with this suite. So before I get to that though, I'm gonna show you one more tip um, that will save you some headache uh, that I forgot about this morning. So I'm gonna bring in my um, my greeting or my gift stamps here. Oh, other stamps included in this set, right? I told you it was pretty robust. I'm gonna use my Memento ink and I'm going to go ahead and open this up because I want to stamp on this center panel card. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, some sort of random shapes here, uh, a little bit like marching across, turning my stamp as I go, and then I'm going to come back with my smaller present and fill in the spaces. It's always safest when you're doing collage type stamping like this to start with your larger image and then go back and add the smaller ones. And I think I don't want a striped package there, I want a regular one. So add that and I'm going to put it down far enough that the bow shows so it isn't just a box bottom. Okay, so that's going to be the center panel. We have a lot of other things going on here. Um, ideally, you wouldn't have stamped over that front edge there, but it'll work out okay. It'll just connect our card together. All right, so now we're going to work on the decorations for the front of this. So I've got a piece of um, basic white cardstock here and I'm going to give us two more presents. Let's see, so one of each size. And then I'm also going to give us this little um, golden retriever um, 
topper here, this little guy, okay, like that. And then the set of dies that goes with this set is fabulous. Um, so here are all the dies that I'm not using for today's card. Um, there are a lot of great choices in here. Um, here are the dies that I am using for today's card, uh, plus the tag, which isn't on here. If you are working on projects, I absolutely love this um, strategy for keeping your dies handy, especially if you're um, you know, working with other stampers or a group of people or you're doing multiples and you don't wanna lose things. This is just a um, frame from the dollar store. Uh, and then I just took a piece of magnet sheet and glued it to the front. So actually my mom did, she made this for me. And then your um, dies will stick to it so you don't lose them in your pieces of stuff. Okay, so dies that match. We're gonna cut out our little puppy here. We're going to cut out one present. We're going to cut out the second present, okay? And I'm gonna put these back on here. Uh, through the magic of television, I have these pieces <laughs> already ready to go. So here we go with these guys. All right, now what else are we gonna need for this? We need a stocking to put our puppy in. So, um, we have these three choices here that we can stamp if we want to, or the um, paper, the designer series paper has these um, images that perfectly match the dies. Now, this is a really cool perk of stamping up um, stamps and coordinating elements is that these things all go together. So the colors go together, they are exactly the same um, shades and tints, so you know they're gonna match. The dies and the papers go together. Um, don't take this for granted. It's definitely a cool thing about Stampin' Up. So I usually rough cut my um, stockings or pieces like this to die cut. And then I would bring in my die like this and cut. And here is the one that I've cut for um, our project today. Now, all of these other ones that like I've got these rough cut scraps and some die cuts that I haven't used yet, I just put these in a clear envelope and store them in my stamp case so that they're there safe for next time. All right, so let's just take a quick sneak preview of how sweet um, this little dog is gonna be. He's gonna fit across the top of our stocking just like that, like he's kind of peeking out. I know, right? Isn't he the sweetest? All right, but we, we've got um, some fun tips and tricks to share with you. So one of the things that's included in this die set um, it, are these uh, little set of three it, little stocking toppers, and they match um, all of the stockings. So these are, even though the stocking sizes are different, top to bottom, these little pieces here that you're gonna die cut um, from paper or from felt, they are a match for all the stockings in this paper or the stockings that you choose to stamp, okay? So lots of possibilities. And through the magic of television, I have um, our felt here. And the felt, the Jolly Felt, like I said, matchy, matchy. Um, the Jolly Felt comes in a package in four colors. So there's the white, there's this gorgeous bumblebee, um, there's cherry cobbler, and there is old olive. And if you've ever tried to match reds and greens, um, yes, you could get felt from the craft store, but it's not gonna match and you'll be less happy with it. So um, the Sweet Collection just has everything and the link is in the supply, or the link to supplies is in the video description. So um, just it's just so much easier, right, to get the ones that actually match. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna cut them. They cut beautifully with your stamp and cut emboss machine. I do have a tip that we're gonna go over on the tag for that. Um, but through the magic of television, I have our pieces here die cut and ready to go. Seriously, did I just lose one? Well, I had them die cut and ready to go. There it is. Okay, the little topper. All right, so getting those back out of the way, I'm going to um, attach some felt to our stocking here. Now, you could use glue. I'm not a fan of the way the glue can saturate the felt, so my preferred strategy is to use um, a non-liquid adhesive like the um, one here. It's very tricky to try to put the um, adhesive on the felt. It's much easier to put the adhesive on your um, cardstock instead or your paper. And I just pulled out my silicone craft mat. Okay, Pepper really wants to go bark at squirrels in our yard. Um, because the silicone craft mat lets you um, have a little bit more um, ability to sort of control where your adhesive goes. And so, um, there we go. Uh, it doesn't stick to your paper when you put it on, which means like this one where I just folded that adhesive back, 
um, is a much easier fix when you're using the craft mat. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pop these little pieces on and the die adds um, a little stitched line, which is super sweet. And it even shows up in the felt, um, which is super fabulous. So just the right um, weight of felt for this project. Okay, all right, so we've got our stocking there and our puppy is gonna fit on the top. I've got my crumb cake markers. So I'm gonna do, like if you saw the video I just shared on um, Stampin' Right Marker, or Stampin' Blends Markers, you're gonna go light, dark, light. Um, I just showed earlier this week a video about Stampin' Blends. So if you feel like you need some assistance with your Stampin' Blends, definitely check it out. I got lots of great comments um, from people who said it was fairly helpful. So, all right, so we did our light. We're going to add our dark here. I'm gonna go kind of along the sides and then in his little under ear parts on the color here line, maybe a little bit down toward his chin. Okay, and then a little bit here where his paws are down by his face and then maybe a little at the bottom of the tips of his paws because they're probably hanging over. Okay, so we did light, we did dark, and now we're just gonna go back to light and just maybe add a tinge of um, blending there at that intersection between the light and the dark, okay? All right, so now he's gonna go on here. Now, I have a really cool um, sort of game changer kind of tip to share with you about these dogs and layering them. Now, I love, 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 here, you can see easily on here, when you have a die cut image that has that white shadow around it because it really makes that stand out. But we want our dog, to be connected to our uh, scar or stocking. We don't want it to be quite so separate. So what I'm gonna do is take my snips and I'm going to carefully cut right outside or on the black line as we are going around here. And then I'll show you how it looks a little bit different. Sometimes it's that little tiny trick that makes the big difference, like the one that step tip number three, magic tip three on Stampin' Blends that I shared the other day it was the big game changer. All right, now check this out. There, now see how much more attached he is to our stocking? Um, so you still have that great halo around the edge that really sets him off, but now the stocking and the dog are connected rather than being split by that white line. All right, but he's not going inside. He's going on the front of our card, uh, okay. And then we are going to, we need like a big focal point on here. So I have the tag that is cut um, here to go on. And this is just cut from cardstock. But what I really want is to cut it from the old olive felt, um, from the jolly felt. Uh, and so I'm going to bring in um, my felt tip. And this one is really important. And it applies not only to cutting felt, um, it applies to cutting felt especially, but also to cutting anything, um, any die that has a big um, long line as part of it. All right, so here are my um, cutting plates, right? So I, I went through my stamp and cut and emboss machine like this. And you'll notice, um, now some people who are like, oh my gosh, it's not square. Um, you'll notice that it's not square. The die is crooked on the plate, and that is super intentional. When you put a die through like this, and it rolls through your stamp and cut and emboss machine, that um, you're gonna hear like a big ka chunk when it rolls across here. Now, it's not gonna hurt anything necessarily, but it means that the, the pressure that's placed by that stamp and cut emboss machine is like divided on this whole line all at one time. So sometimes you just don't get the perfect cut at that edge because that ka-chunk means that that pressure is divided too much. So instead, if you're picturing it rolling through this way, you would see that your pressure is applied here to just that little bit, here in a couple different places, here. So here I got it kind of straight, but you see what I mean? There's no big like ka-chunk point where the, the stamp and cut emboss machine has like one major line of pressure at one point. So think about um, how you're placing your dies on there. This is also true for my favorite um, Stitch So Sweetly dies. Um, when you're rolling over these, remember to put them on at an angle um, on your plates so that you're doing your stamp and cut emboss machine a favor and giving it the best opportunity to make a really great cut. Now, 
That being said, I've had really great luck with my felt. I've definitely remembered to put them on an angle and you can see how cleanly that cuts um, just right there. So pull this off. All right, so remember that tip. Now you might be wondering why I did both because I want my um, felt to overlap the edge here and it's not really strong enough on its own to overlap. So I'm going to give it a cardstock backing that will uh, just strengthen it just a little bit more. And I'm going to attach it again. I, I try not to use glue with a felt because I don't want it to saturate. Um, so tear tape or um, seal plus are great choices. All right, so now we have a gorgeous felt tag with a really pretty um, cut line on the back because that is going to, I mean, technically it could show inside your card, okay? So we have this that's gonna be set up just like that. So um, we're not gonna stick it down yet because I have another felt layer to put on and we wanna do our little presents and so forth. So, all right, stay. <laughs> oh, all right, so now I'm gonna bring in some Stampin' Blends. This is a stamp set that you can color if you want. You can skip coloring if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and do some stripes here. I'm gonna do um, Daffodil Delight. The color in the set is Bumblebee. And Stampin' Blend markers come in most of the colors, but not all of them. So for whatever reason, they um, are not in Bumblebee. No biggie. Daffodil Delight is a great accent, so. All right, so I'm gonna bring light. I'm gonna do dark, and I'm gonna do dark right up next to the little, um, right under our bow and right up next to our piece there. And then here at the bottom of the bow and where it connects and then at the bottom of the present and then light. So what, let's see, I actually had a stamper the other day say that they really wanted to get started with Stampin' Blends and she was like, what, what colors to start with? Like how do you start your collection, right? So if anybody has any ideas on like their favorite way to start a Stampin' Blends collection, collection, like what color would you pick first? What's your go-to? What color do you use the most of all out of everything? Leave that as a comments. Maybe somebody, maybe that'll be helpful to somebody to see what everyone's favorites are. I mean, I have all of them. It's a perk of being a demonstrator, I tell you. That, that demonstrator discount is a great thing. Um, but, uh, it's tricky to get all of them to start. So I usually say to kind of pick out um, like your favorite colors. If you're a fall person, pick fall. So I'm doing light, dark, light here while I'm chatting. Um, if you're a fall person, pick fall colors or pick a stamp set. Like if you're doing that sunflower from Celebrate Sunflowers that we used the other day, uh, then Celebrate Sunflowers colors could be um, yellows and Cajun and so forth would be great choices. So you could you could pick your first Stampin' Blends to go with a stamp set that you plan to color with them. Um, that way at least you have one fun um, project to get started on. Now, if you, um, you might wonder why I didn't do the edges there, I'm gonna go back with my bullet tip and get those really tight corners that I don't wanna like smear into. So each Stampin' Blend marker has two tips, which gives you lots of good choices on how to, and actually I might use my bullet tip here when you're working with really small stuff. So I'm gonna do this bow and then a little bit here along next to the edge of the bow. When you're working with really small stuff, um, that bullet tip is invaluable. Okay, the squirrel must still be there, I don't know. Or maybe um, my poor puppy knows that we're doing dog cards today, so she wants to be part of things. All right. Okay, so now we've got our presents on here. So let's look at how these are gonna come along. Trish said, um, the tag cut shorter and the point pointing up would make a cute, oh my gosh, yes! <gasps> okay, well clearly at some point there's gonna be a doghouse kind of thing here. Like he could be sitting on the front, oh my gosh, Trish, that's so cute. Um, the uh, Dog could be sitting here, you could make a little thing and he could be like sticking his head out the front. Oh, I love that, that's so cute. Um, and Gian says that Kachunk should be in the Stampin' Up! Dictionary. I'm pretty sure it is actually. Um, along with Poppy Uppy Things is my other um, big one, which is Stampin' Dimensionals, in case you didn't know the lingo. All right, so let's look at how these are gonna go together. Um, I want presents to be on here and at first I had them designed this way 
and then we're gonna add our grating and I'm gonna show you why I didn't leave it this way. Okay, pop that on there so it stays. So let's grab some um, basic white cardstock again. Oh, that's the inside of my card. Where's my basic white? Okay, we'll, we'll use this big sheet here. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm gonna bring um, in a greeting and you can use lots of choices. There are lots of good ones on here. Um, Peace, joy, and kisses is kind of perfect for the pets. But we're just gonna go with the um, Christmas greetings and then you could decide something different for the inside. So I'm inking in memento. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp on here. And I don't do this very often, but when I do, it is, um, I feel like a commercial. What's the commercial for that's a, I don't do blah, 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 but when I do, uh, anyway, uh, Captain Morgan or something like that, right? So I don't do this technique very often, but when I do, um, it is often the like perfect accent. So I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to cut around the edge now. If you are new to doing this, um, what you wanna think about is not necessarily cutting every detail, but kind of like um, rolling along the edge of the paper so that you have a border that's about similar as you are going all the way around the letters. So sometimes I'm more successful than others, but overall it works pretty well. Um, so I'll show you on the bottom. The biggest trick to doing this and getting a smooth line is to only turn the paper with your paper holding hand and only um, keep the scissors straight and squeeze with your scissor holding hand. So I am not turning my scissor hand, I am just turning my paper holding hand, okay? All the things I need to know I learned in kindergarten, right? All right, so here is our greeting. Tanya likes poppy uppy things, uh, pluggy. <laughs> Plugging any things. Okay, so Tanya says she calls her cell phone chargers plugging, pluggy, plugging any things. I like that, actually. I might have to borrow that. Okay, so like I said, I had my little guys arranged like this, and then I went to put my greeting on, and it kind of like split the presents in a way I didn't love. So, because um, I want this present to show on the top and the bottom, I thought, hey, easy fix. We're gonna move this one to the outside. And we're gonna put this one here on the inside. And now our greeting doesn't cover up the bottom of our present. So we still get that full present effect. You see how much nicer that is? I know it's like super subtle, but sometimes it's those little tricks that help. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, we're still not gonna attach this to the card because we have one more um, thing to do on our card front to finish it off. But let's go ahead and start attaching things here to our background. So. You guys know that I like to figure out my layout for stuff and get it all settled and then take one element off at a time to go ahead and pop on. So I'm gonna do this one element at a time and that way I'm not having to reconstruct my whole design. I'm just reinserting that one little bit there. So, okay. And then our stocking is a little bit angled there. And again, uh, seal plus is my go-to for something like this. And then I'm gonna kind of eye that with our dog back on. Okay, there we go. And then for our puppy, um, I'm going to go ahead and attach um, his paws and so forth, but I'm not gonna put any adhesive under the top yet because um, we know how that's gonna go. Now, when you're going off the edge of something and you might need to roll back, uh, remember to grab your um, silicone craft mat because you can easily um, pick up the adhesive and can you see what I'm doing there? Roll back the edges uh, that would have been over the edge and stuck to your paper. So that mat is really handy. I just used it actually for a Halloween costume project that I'm working on. I'll have to show it to you when it's all done. It's kind of a big, uh, kind of a big project. So I've learned to use this amazing stuff called Cobra cast. It starts with a K. If you're like into, it's kind of a cosplay thing. If you're into cool like modeling stuff, you probably know what it is. I didn't and I do not know where it's been all my life, but I'm so excited. All right, so back to our greeting here. Um, I'm going to flip this over and pop a couple dimensionals on the back. So we'll put one here on the end and then it's a little bit tight. So instead of the big ones, I'm gonna add a couple um, mini Stampin' Dimensionals here on the other parts of it. And we're gonna stick this down onto our card front. And 
See how cute this card? So you can see where the um, fabulousness of this card front really kind of says, hey, I want to see that again. I don't want to just open my card and have it disappear. Okay, but we're not quite done with the front because we're going to add one more felt accent. So I kind of looked through my felt choices and decided which one I wanted to um, either bring in a new color of like the bumblebee or wanted to repeat. And so I decided to go with my um, cherry cobbler here, the cherry cobbler felt, and I cut a strip that's about an inch wide and we're gonna add this as a layer on the front of our card. It's really tempting um, because of the way we do our cardstock attaching to wanna try and put adhesive on here, but it's so much easier to put your adhesive on the card front. And there you can see that it's not gonna matter too much that I went over the line. I'm gonna kind of crowd this direction. I don't really want my felt centered on that strip. I want it to be a little to the side so that it kind of creates motion um, rather than sort of making a static point. All right, so what do you guys think? Isn't this like the cutiest thing? Um, all right, we're gonna do a little bit more on the inside to finish it off, but I wanted to tell you um, about attaching this. The felt adds enough real layer to this card that um, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this part flat under the felt. You can kind of see how um, there's some thickness there. And then I'm gonna attach this part out here with Stampin' Dimensionals that I just put away. Uh, okay, so pull these back out again. So Stampin' Dimensionals out here. And then this part, you're gonna have to think ahead about your adhesive and figure out where that adhesive line is gonna go because you don't want to glue your card shut. Ask me how I know. <laughs> anyway, don't ask, don't ask me how I know. All right, did I tell you that I glued a card shut this morning when I was getting ready for this video? I think I might've mentioned it. Okay. So now we have our card front, ta -da, which is gonna open and still be appreciated when the card is open this way, but we need a place to do our writing um, and so forth. So I have a piece of basic white card stock that's cut to four by four inches. And this is where you can bring in some of those other fun stamps that you haven't used yet. So I'm going to bring in this stocking here like that and I'm going to add some little stitch lines. Now, this is another, like, use your grid paper. I have it set up so that I've got my stitches in the third block, and I'm going to use that line to continue it on this side, okay? I'm not gonna go all the way across because it's really just tempting fate to do that, but it's kind of a fun side element. And then I'm going to um, just add a couple of these little stars out here. Let's see. Maybe up there. Okay, it needs one more. All right, there's our star. So then this um, can get attached inside. And you can choose to use your Stampin' Blends and color this guy or not. I'll show you the colored example also. But this is the, the black and white version, also cute. And I, the reason I use black, sometimes people ask like, how do you know whether you're supposed to use black or early espresso, what's the difference? Um, I take my cue from the designer series paper and the designer series paper um, detailed lines are black on this paper um, or they might actually be uh, green, evening evergreen, now that I'm looking at them with my contacts on. Uh, but in any case, they're really dark and so I decided to go with a black instead of brown for my accents on this, okay? So what do you guys think? Um, the other piece that's included in this suite mm -hmm. that you could add to this card if you wanted to are these um, sweet little matte dots, matte decorative dots. You could pop some of those on here if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna save these for some other projects in this um, month uh, of October Love and Stamps tutorial. So I'm gonna show you some more cards, but this is one of the cards they'll have Lots of photos um, and directions for um, making this card. So if you place any size order in my store with um, the during the month of October, then you will get um, the PDF tutorial for this project and three others. If you um, are interested in um, ordering at least $50, then you'll get two card kits in the mail. Um, so the supplies, um, pre-cut and everything to make two of the four projects. So you can watch for those later this month. Um, and if you are um, interested in the Loven Stamp monthly tutorials, um, but you're not ordering right now, um, be sure to check my Etsy shop, um, link in the video description, because some of my tutorials are available for sale there. 
and that could be a great way to get a hold of those um, easy printed, lots of um, big photos, directions, cutting supplies, all this stuff is included in those. So they can really um, make your paper crafting a lot easier if you didn't get those by ordering. So, all right, guys, uh, that, woo, that <laughs> was a lot of happy faces. Trish really likes this card and Deborah says she wants that puppy. You sound like my kids. Mom, can we get a puppy? Mom, can we get a puppy? Mom, can we get a puppy? How about a puppy? Have you seen a puppy? We would like to get another puppy. Like, oh my gosh, okay, I get it, but no. You know what? Here's your puppy. <laughs> so Deborah, you can get a puppy if you want to, but I don't have to take care of it. So <laughs> use, your, use your best judgment there. Um, let's see, okay, just checking. Taryn says she really loves the card. Pam, thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, I'm so glad that you guys could be here this morning. I do really love this double Z fold. Um, I actually have another double Z fold to show you. Um, this one is one that I did um, just over a year ago, but same layout when you stamp it um, and you do your double Z, you get the fabulous inside of your card as well as the outside of your card when the card is open. So. I just totally adore that um, layout and that ability to have your have your cake and eat it too kind of thing. <laughs> so um, anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous Friday and a wonderful weekend. Ours is uh, filled with cross country meet and a uh, marching band competition, the first one of the year. So fingers crossed on that. I know they'll do a great job. And uh, yeah, um, recording music, audition things, all kinds of stuff going on here. So, uh, and probably some crafting. So, um, the, uh, card tutorials for these, um, will be out later and I'll have some more projects to share with you. If they don't post today, they'll post on Monday. Um, if you're curious about the October cards, they feature this, um, sweet stocking suite. So know that if you go ahead and add this one to your shopping cart, um, you'll be in good shape. A word on that, um, as you guys know, supply chain issues are a big thing uh, for everyone, not just stamping, um, but I would advise you, I really think that this suite is gonna be one of the really popular ones, uh, and I think that it will probably have some periods of being in, avail in stock and unavailable. So um, if this is one that you really love, don't wait to get it, just go ahead and get it now so that you're not getting caught in one of those like, is it gonna be here in time kind of situations. Um, and know that I will share some great projects with you so you have lots of ideas for fun things to do with it. Um, October host code is in the video description. And uh, as always, you know, I love you guys uh, and appreciate when you share or like or comment or all of those things, YouTube, Facebook, all the places, so. All right, guys, so glad you're excited about our puppy. I wish you the best with your puppies. Mine is going to go outside and chase squirrels now. So <laughs> happy stamping, everybody.